about this a lot right now is what is the strategy as far as the crypto space is concerned? And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I see sort of two paths in terms of your vision here. One is facilitating what I know you're very passionate about, which is financial inclusion and allowing or facilitating people to invest in, in crypto or digital assets if they want to accumulate wealth and think there's a way to do that. But the other thing is the network effect. So allowing people to transact between cryptocurrencies, let's use Bitcoin as an example, transact and, and swap that into fiat currency and then spend it. Are those the two paths? Well, we want to be in the middle of any movement of funds, and we, we don't try to decide what's going to take off or not take off, and we don't pick winners and losers. We just get ready to enable whatever could possibly happen. And I think crypto is an exciting trend. There are, there's cryptocurrencies, which are kind of the digital gold. Think of uh, Bitcoin, and there what we're trying to do is create utility, uh, which, for, first of all, allowing making sure that our Visa cards are, are used to be able to purchase Bitcoin, and then when somebody wants to convert their Bitcoin to a fiat currency, uh, to, use, to use a Visa credential to you go shop at our 70 million merchants around the world. So we're trying to create that utility. In digital currencies, we really see them as a, a potential player in, in global commerce going forward. And we're doing a number of things to make sure that we enable that to happen if, in fact, that's what consumers want to have happen. So we're working with 35 of the big, biggest digital, uh, I'm sorry, the biggest crypto uh, wallets around the world, making sure that these uh, various digital currencies can be converted into a fiat currency and that money can then be spent uh, from a Visa card in a, in a wallet, and again, at any one of our 70 million merchants around, around the world. We're also looking to make sure that we can, and we've been working on our infrastructure for 18 months to make sure that we can enable digital settlement. Uh, today, we set, we allow transactions at 160 currencies, and we settle in the evening on 25 different currencies. Over time, I looked at for us to be able to settle in cryptocurrencies, and we're experimenting with that right now with a, with a couple of issuers and over time with acquirers. And then... Last week, I think it was, we announced a, a set of crypto APIs, which are basically allowing a bank to, for their customers to have an on-ramp through their mobile app or through their website to be able to go buy, uh, trade, and custody uh, cryptocurrencies like Bit Bitcoin. And our, our first pilot is with, with First Boulevard, a, a company that's focused on uh, the black community in the United mm -hmm. States and trying to help them. Uh, get to uh, a state where they, they, they're more financially included in the mainstream. And, and that's something that's extremely important to us. The bottom line is that I, I don't know whether crypto will be adopted and at what pace it will be adopted, but we are ready to go and we're leading the marketplace by a lot in terms of setting up the on-ramps for people to be able to facilitate using uh, these uh, various digital currencies. If it's happening, you want to be there. Um, you know, we, we're talking a lot about what we call decentralized coins, but what about, because there will be people looking at this who, who know something about digital and digital assets like these and saying they're too volatile, you can't spend these, the transaction costs are too high. What about paving the way one day, and central banks are clearly talking about this, as, as being a facilitator of using central bank digital money, so a Fed coin, a Bank of England coin. Can you envisage a future where that becomes perhaps a bigger part of the network than any of these individual coins that we've just mentioned? Oh, I certainly can. And we're in conversations with a number of central banks around the world about various private public partnerships where our a network like ours globally can, can really help a central bank that tends to focus, obviously, on their single domestic market. And uh, we have a network that spans virtually every country and territory in the world, and we can help facilitate much wider utility uh, in terms of, of buying uh, if these central bank digital currencies take off. And I think there, there, there's likely, likelihood that they might, and I think that they could be a, a, a vehicle that helps uplift some of the 1.7 billion people around the world who today, Julie, are outside the, the financial mainstream. And that's an objective that we share. We, we want all people to be in, in the financial mainstream, and we're going to do every, continue to do everything we can to enable that to happen. It's going to take a long time, but uh, we're patient and we're in it for the long term to make it happen. 
Yeah, and you have all sorts of programmes which I would love you to come back and talk about again, including enabling, digitally enabling 50 million small businesses around the world, and you've got all sorts of programmes which are phenomenal. I, I have about 30 seconds left, so I'm going to ask a question that I've been asking all CEOs and presidents of big companies. Any plans in light of what Tesla's done with cash on the balance sheet to swap out some of that cash and buy Bitcoin, for example, or digital assets to diversify your balance sheet, Al? Uh, no, we have no plans to do that, Julia. Our, our, our focus at this point is 100 percent on being ready to enable uh, digital currencies to be uh, have utility and be used in a safe, secure fashion for consumers around the world, if in fact that is what takes off. Yeah, you've got enough going on. Fantastic to have you on the show.